caught on the cloud. All right. Anyhow, I'll be here at 745 if you have any questions on anything, like if you have questions on the practice test. It's not going to be like a formalized review. I'll just be there to answer any questions. I really urge you as much as possible to take the practice test. I think I took it yesterday. I think it's really good. It's a good preparation, both the multiple choice part and the FRQ. On the FRQ, I can almost guarantee you they'll start out with one of those long run, short run aggregate demand, like either in a recession or an in inflation, then they ask you like fiscal or monetary policy to fix it, you know, draw the MS, the money supply graph, maybe fire in the loanable funds graph. So you need to know those graphs for the FRQ. And there's an there's a practice FRQ there that's pretty realistic. All right, to me, like the must, oh, it's working, good. The must knows, you need to know all the graphs and shifters. There's a place in the AP review that has all the graphs and shifters for you. How to fix like recessionary and um, inflationary gaps with monetary and fiscal policy. So you, you definitely need to know that. How to increase or decrease you know, with the money multiplier and the formulas. That's not all that's on the test, but if you don't know that stuff, you, that it's really gonna be difficult, okay? Um, and I'm adding 15% to your grade. So I'm not curving at 15%, I'm adding 15. I think it's different. I think it's better this way, right? Like mathematically, if you got a 70 and I curved at 50%, it would probably be like an 83 or 82, and I'm going to give you 85. Okay? Okay. You know, you guys blew it because I was thinking if I got a standing ovation, I would have done 20%. But all right. All right. Take the practice test. Just... Please, please take the practice test. All right, here again, for the old one guys, your Monday is um, 30 multiple choice. You're an A day guy if you're here Monday, all right? And then if you're not here or you're virtual, you'll do the FRQ for 01. 02, Monday, first 30 here, FRQ. And it's the same for 03, okay? So, so there it is, Monday. A-day guys or people who be here Monday, um, multiple choice, people who are either B-day or virtual, there. All right, what I'm gonna do today is just pose some quite, um, a couple of the classes said they'd rather learn from questions. This would be the last unit. Um, and I stuck some of the first unit because we really didn't go over that that much in the question. So I'll give you a minute. Let's look at this question and see what we have. Did I put the questions on the sheet? Yes. Okay. And I think some of the questions are on your sheet. Okay. Hub, you feel like you have this one? Um, shout out. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's D. Okay, it is, Hub said D as in dogwood. Agreement, hands up if we agree. Okay, lots of agreement here, Hub. D as in dogwood is, tr is correct. All right, if it is bowed out, um, opportunity cost increases, why? Anyone remember why opportunity cost increase? Right, resources are not easily adaptable. So you could be like computers and pizza makers. 
All right, shifters of the production possibilities curve. One, change in quantity or quality of resources. I notice on the AP exams, they use human, human capital a lot. That would be quality resource, right? You going to college is human capital. Um, technology, and then change in capital stock, meaning more machines, more factories, more equipment. All right, so those are the three shifters. If you shift the production possibilities curve, you shift the LRAS curve. If you shift the LRAS curve, you shift the Phillips long run curve in the opposite direction. Okay? Questions on number one. Go now. It, on the X and Y axis, differs on what two products they want to pick. A lot of times, I think what you're thinking, Nick, a lot of times you see capital and consum con consumption, okay? But they could put any two products on there, okay? All right, next question up. Which of the following policy actions will promote long run economic growth? Again, I'll give you a minute. Anyone feel good about this one here? One hand. Nick? D as in dogwood? Yes, D as in dogwood, increasing investment in human capital. We just went over the shifters of LRAS because they're the same as the production possibilities curve. Okay? Right, Any time they use economic growth, it is the long run. So a shift in AD to the right, while that is growth in the short run, that is not economic growth. Economic growth would be a shift in the LRAS or production possibilities curve. All right. Next up, let me try to just minimize this. All right, which, which of the following transaction would increase the current account surplus in Japan's balance of payments. Can you give me another like 15 seconds? Okay, let's just do a poll here. You guys at home, hit the chat. Who's got A as an alpha? We got a splattering of hands, but not really a strong showing. Brandon, the only one going with A at home. B, B as in broccoli. No health foods here. 
C as in Caroline. I got some people, some people put, guys at home, what are, are we? D as in dogwood. Oh, we've got some dogwood. We got a dogwood. E as in Ellen. We got a lot of people not casting votes. All right, if A, because A seems like a popular, Japan-based company sells roasted coffee to Canada. What does that increase for Japan? The net exports, which would then give you a current account surplus. So it is A as in alpha. All right, now, because I think maybe we forgot current and financial account, I put this up here. So your current, if your current account's in a surplus, your financial account has to be in a deficit because they add up to zero. So current account, net exports, that's exports minus imports, net investment. Net investment is profits made on international investment. So if I owned a Domino's pizza store in Japan, it would be the money I made from that store, not how much the store costs me. And then net transfers is like foreign aid or Brian sending money to his parents who now live in England. Very nice and generous of you, Brian. The financial account is two types of investment. Portfolio investment, which would be like buying bonds and stocks. Now, when a foreign country buys our bonds, that shifts savings in the loanable funds market. Okay? Because bonds are like savings. And then a direct investment would be like Caleb opening up a McDonald's in Japan. That's like buying a business, building a factory. All right, again, if your current account, like in the United States, where net exports is a huge negative number, is negative, your financial account is going to be positive. And that's why you have a lot of foreign countries owning a lot of US, like land, real estate, and bonds. All right, any question on the current or financial account? I'd say 95% of the current account questions are driven around net exports, to be honest. All right, here's a foreign exchange question. In the foreign exchange market, the exchange rate is defined as, give you a minute. George, you got this one? Okay. Okay, what do you got? The pre you got A as an alpha? Ben, you're going with A as an alpha? Huh? You're going with that? All right. A as in alpha. All right, now. Shifters of the, uh, let me see, do I have the foreign exchange? There is the foreign exchange graph. So I would like, if this was US, US should be on top of the graph. I'd put pesos on top of dollars. 
quantity of dollars. Remember, anything above the equilibrium appreciates, anything below the equilibrium depreciates. Shifters of the foreign exchange graph. Could someone give me one of the four shifters? All right, price levels. So if price levels are high in the U.S., people don't want to buy U.S. goods. We're going to want to buy Mexican goods. We're going to demand the pesos and supply the dollar. Price level was one. Interest rates. Do we want high or low What's going to attract money, high or low interest rates? Did you say high? High interest rates. Because if Mexico's interest rates are higher than us, we'll either want to buy Mexican bonds to earn high interest or put money in Mexican banks to earn high interest. So we have interest price levels needing two more. Income, income, okay? If the United States income increases, we are gonna buy more exports. Obviously, if the Mexican income increase more, they buy more of our goods. So we have income, price level, interest. Anyone remember one more? Taste, okay, taste of preference. So, you know, if one of the countries has a hot item or new technology, new gaming, something like that, that could get, attract money. So I think of it as tippy, taste, relative interest, price levels, income. Now, remember, they usually only ask you to graph one but if this was the United States, and let's say price levels in the United States went up, we would want to buy Mexican goods. We demand Mexican pesos. But if I go to the bank and I want pesos, what do, what do I have to give them? I got to give them dollars. So while the demand of the peso increases, the supply of the dollar increases, okay? And the demand of one country, if it shifts right, the supply of the other country will shift right. If the demand of one country shifts left, the supply of the other country shifts left. Any questions on the foreign exchange? Anyone at home with a question on the foreign exchange? Uh, what was the, like, the letter answer to the last question? A as in alpha. Okay, thank you. Problem. All right, and this was just like here, here I did say um, the demand for the dollar increased, and I just showed you then for the, you know, the peso, the supply of the peso would increase. All right, which of the following is true of a current account deficit? Give you a minute to ponder.
And let me get a, a chat. We'll go through them. All right, who's got A as an alpha? What would cause a trade surplus, by the way? Anyone? What 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 is a trade surplus? Ben? Yeah, exports over imports. Ben, if we had a trade surplus, the current account would be what? Would be surplus. All right. B as in broccoli. Do I see a B? C as in Caroline. Can there be a deficit in the financial and the current accounts? No, because they got to equal zero. D as in dogwood. No, the United States might hope that would happen. E as in Ellen. Okay. All right. E as in Ellen is the correct one. What was I thinking here? Oh, the supply and demand of foreign exchange. What is this? Oh. All right. If foreign financial investors no longer see country A as a safe haven, which of the following would most likely occur in the short run? All right, let's try another chat here. I thought this might be, all right. Who's got A as an alpha? B as in broccoli? B seems a little popular at home. C as a Caroline, D as a Dogwood, E as an Ellen. All right, who would like to explain B as in broccoli to the fans? Ben? Okay, uh, as Ben said, people would don't feel country A like a safe, so therefore they're not going to demand country A's currency because they're certainly not going to build factories and open up businesses there. So if I was graphing it, it would just demand would shift left I'm below the equilibrium, so therefore the currency is going to depreciate. Now, if country A's currency depreciates, and let's take the safe haven and let's take the instability out for a second. Just think of a country's um, currency depreciates 
What is going to happen to net exports in that country? Think about it for 30 seconds. If a country's currency depreciates, what's going to happen to net exports for that country? Let's see if we get some of that home here. Jason, what do you think? Uh, pardon? What, what do you think will happen to net exports? Uh, they're probably going to decrease. Why? Because there's not as much uh, investment. Okay. He said he thought they would um, decrease. Okay. Yeah, they're going to increase because the country with depreciated currency, their goods are going to look cheaper, so other countries are going to buy their goods. Okay? Now, let's just say country A's currency depreciated, their net exports increased, What's going to happen to their current account? Mr. Campbell, I'm going to give you time. I'm going to walk it through. So the currency depreciated because the currency was cheaper. People were buying country A's goods. So net exports increased. Now we're trying to think about what's going to happen to current account. There would be a surplus because net exports increase. Good job. Uh, any question on this, this problem itself? Okay. See, could I switch it? All right, there's the graph. All right. Can you look at this chart and tell me who has the comparative advantage? in coffee and who has the absolute advantage in coffee. Okay, so we're looking for the comparative and the absolute advantage in coffee. What? Do you guys have a question? Okay. What? Okay. Okay. All right, Jordan, first question, Jordan, is this an input or an output question? It's gonna be input. All right, Jordan said it's an input. Jordan, how did you know it was input? Uh, Cause it's based on the uh, hours, not the amount of coffee or wheat. Okay, right, it's based on the hours, not about the coffee. That being said, anyone here, what, who has the absolute advantage? Just say it again. All right, Peru, because for an input, we're looking about who can make coffee in the least amount, six hours to 12. All right. Now, if they asked you for wheat, 
No one has the absolute advantage, right? They both have the same. Who has the comparative advantage, Ben? Peru. Now, Ben, how do you get Peru there? Okay, I got to repeat for the guys at home. Uh, ben said input equals other under. He took the four and put it under the 12 and the six. You always want the smallest number. Peru has 1.5 to three. So therefore, Peru has a comparative advantage. If Peru has a comparative advantage in coffee, I know Brazil has to have it in wheat because you can only have the comparative advantage in one thing. Can I have the absolute advantage in two? Yes. <laughs> okay. So you can have the absolute advantage in two. You can only have the comparative advantage in one. If it was an output problem. What's the formula for output? Oh, a very weak ooh by the crowd. <laughs> All right. Uh, ooh, output equal other over. Okay, any questions on this? Nick. Absolute advantage is who can produce the most outputs or use the least inputs. Okay, now this could be in a multiple choice. It's commonly in an FRQ. Do you have your hand up? Okay. Any questions? Do you have a question, Brian? No. You sure? Okay. All right. The opportunity cost from point P to point R. Did I just? I think I just showed you what, oh, which one of these are true? There it is. Okay, I'll give you a minute to see which one of these is true. Mr. Welsh, which one of these is true? Um, it's not the last one, and it's, oh dear. <laughs> huh? Be the first one? You're saying only the first one? Yes. Okay. TJ, do you agree that only the first one is true? Ah, yes. Oh dear. You're, you're agreeing with yes. Any dissenters here? Mr. King? You're saying all of them is true. Mr. Stewart? I, I also think all of them are true. All of them. Uh, someone else had their hand up here. Jordan? Yeah, I think all of them are true as well. Yeah, they, they all are true. Every one of them is true. All right. Now, if I'm, if I'm point P 
a point R. What does that mean, Brian? The resources are used efficiently. Point Q is inefficient use of the resources. That could be a recession. That could be unemployment. Okay, that's inefficient. And if it was outside the bode, it would be unattainable with present resources. Questions on production possibilities. All right, here we go. Give me a minute for this one. I'll shorten these guys up here. Mr. Curtis, what do we have here? You have Diaz and broccoli? Is that what he said? Okay. Agreement with Diaz and broccoli. Uh-oh. Okay, what do you have? C? It's, it's C, resources are not available to achieve. Guys, hold on, I wanna do one more. Go, last one. The government has increased the budget deficit and interest rates have remained constant. Which of the following is true? Guys, just settle for one more minute. Just try to think this problem out, because this is a tough one. Anyone feel they have the answer to this? Go. B as in broccoli? All right. If the government spending is greater than tax revenue, that's gonna increase the deficit. So that's definitely right. Where is government gonna to go to get money? Huh? To banks, not, not necessarily the, to regular bit. So huh, guys, focus. If government goes to loanable funds and demands money, what happens to interest rates? They go up. So how do we keep, but the problem says keep interest rates constant. So you need to look at C, government spends greater than tax revenue. The central bank increases money supply, which lowers interest rates that balances loanable funds. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Sure. Jordan, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, my thing froze. Sorry. I I figured that since the government would be spending greater than tax revenue, wouldn't that increase uh, AD and then lower interest rates? So they would need to decrease the money no. supply to keep it fixed. No, if, if you increase AD, aren't you going to raise interest rates because price levels are going to go up and the demand for money would increase? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.